Hey folks, it's Tom, your frugal prepper. So I want to talk today about a Colt 1911, not an A1, not uh, not anything. It's a 1911. It was made in 1918. Uh, this is a U.S. Army model. All right, so this is the uh, gun here. It's a uh, it's unloaded. Uh, let's just double check it. Chamber is clear. This is a firing weapon. Uh, it does does fire and, and function flawlessly. Um, I did bend a firing pin in it uh, a couple years ago. Uh, firing pin's been replaced, and the recoil spring finally gave out, <laughs> and so that's been replaced. Other than that, I believe this gun is 100% all original. Um, this gun was carried by my great uncle Paul. Um, he was in uh, the army. So from the mid 20s to the mid 40s, um, he got out just after we reached Berlin. Um, so he was a provost marshal, and uh, I know this this gun's been in several countries. Um, I know that it has it had been in France. I believe it was in Berlin right before the war was out. I know it was in England at one point. I know it's been to India. I know it's been to South Africa. So uh, quite a bit of history with this gun. Uh, this is not the original holster to the gun, but I did find an original U.S. Army holster for it. Um, and uh, I bought that up. <laughs> um, so this uh, here is the a magazine that came with it. Is it original to the gun? I have no idea, but it definitely came with it when I inherited it. And it came with some of the original U.S. Army lead uh, ball rounds uh, which I have not shot these I've always shot a different magazine in it and I've just kept this ammo as it was when I inherited it um, this uh, is well worn it does have a couple of spots that will rust up on it here I keep it oiled really well um, it looks rusty but this is actually the parkerization uh, the majority of this um, and it's just that the parkerization has worn off over the years uh, and uh, it, uh, it's a really uh, good well functioning firearm still um, it doesn't rattle too much but it does have a little rattle to it it's a little, little slides a little loose but it is a fairly accurate weapon uh, the barrel is well worn the rifling is well worn but it is still there um, and it's been shot a lot. I actually uh, took this for my concealed carry class about uh, 12 years ago and um, fired 200 rounds through it and it, it ran flawlessly and that was still on the original firing pin. On the firing pin what happened was it, uh, it had worn down uh, the circumference of the firing pin to where it would fit too far forward and then it had stuck forward and when it went to load another round it came up and it bent that firing pin a little bit it, it was just worn out this gun has been shot a lot um, so my grandfather uh, in, inherited it from my great uncle he shot it a lot uh, my dad inherited it from him he shot it a lot I inherited it from my dad and I shot it a lot um, but anymore I, uh, I will occasionally take out and run a magazine through this gun clean it, oil it, and put it up. I, I don't, uh, I've just decided it's 103 years old now, and uh, it's time for it to get a little relaxation. Uh, but I do like to keep it in working order. Um, you know, just, just because. <laughs> um, but uh, this is serial number uh, uh, 321,000, which places it made in 1918. So right, at the end of World War One, uh, and and that's pretty common because they were just making a crap ton of weapons and really gearing up for World War One right as it ended, and then a lot of these just went into storage, and then they got issued to soldiers as they joined, um, and so this would have been issued to my great uncle in the mid 1920s, um, and it says uh, patented. Uh, September 9th, 1902, December 19th, 1905, February 14th, 1911, and August 19th, 1913. 
it says Colt Colt P T F M F A M F G C O Hartford, Connecticut. It's got a little picture of the Colt horse on it there. I don't know if you can see that. And down here it's pretty it's pretty worn off. Um right right down here on the actual frame it does say US Army property but it's really really worn off and it almost looks like somebody might have rubbed on those letters to try to rub that off of there which was a pretty common thing on these pistols when soldiers brought them back and, and either the soldier or the people who inherited it would try to rub that US Army property off and they actually are worth a little bit more if that lettering is intact re really well um, you can just start to see the end of property here but uh, you know it's part of the guns history and I'm just gonna you know let it go you know I'm not really interested in what the uh, you know financial value is in this it's 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 a family heirloom and um, so I'm I'm really happy to really happy to have this gun and I'm really happy that I'll be able to pass it on to my son one day as well um, and I'm really happy that I found the original holster, and I have the original uh, belt for this holster as well. Um, it won't ever fit me, but uh, <laughs> it's made for a much thinner person, but I do have one. And so yeah, these just fit uh, right down in here, like so. And you put that over, and you have your gun. You would typically carry this in the cocked and locked position, right? And so you would uh, put it around in the chamber and then it has a cock and lock. Um, so the other thing about these guns, was if you shoot them, is this hammer right here really will come back and bite you. If you get your hand up here too high, this will really just pinch the ever living crap out of you. I mean, it'll take chunks of skin out. So you have to make sure you hold it down low enough where on the newer ones they, they did a slightly different hammer design and they bobbed this hammer and they made the beaver tail a lot uh, a lot uh, uh, better <laughs> but uh, these early ones they, they will get you um, uh, the sights are pretty rudimentary on this I mean this guy's got a little nub up here it's got a little groove back here but they are accurate I mean they, they, I can hit you know all day long and 10 15 yards with this thing um, I'm no marksman shooter or anything but um, they seem accurate enough uh, the uh, when I replaced the firing pin on this it was completely just packed with all kinds of powder and residue down inside that firing pin cavity so I had to really get the the uh, brass brushes out and clean that all out real good um, and get the new firing pin working fine uh, but yeah She's got uh, the wood grips, um, and they're you know they're pretty worn. They got some wear on them, you know. This thing was in a holster every day for 20 years for my great uncle. It went through a war, um, and then it's been you know handled and passed down through the family. Um, but yeah, it's pretty nice. So normally you would carry these in the cocked and locked position, or they would have back then. I do not carry it that way anymore. Uh, because these early ones, uh, I don't know exactly what the uh, the malfunction or the misdesign is, but there is a slight chance when you rack around in the chamber like that 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 hammer can drop. Um, and so I don't carry it that way. Uh, and I don't really carry it. I have carried it before, but I carry it without one in the chamber when when and if I would carry it. Um, but it's a big heavy gun for carrying and um, while I have carried it a few times you know I, I just I won't do that anymore because if I have to use it the police are going to confiscate it right and I wouldn't want that <laughs> so uh, but you know at one time in my life this was my only handgun so it was what I had um, now I have many handguns uh, but you know I uh, I will, you know, keep this and cherish it and keep it in a temperature controlled, humidity controlled safe, keep it oiled and uh, 
you know, an old gun like this, I'm going to oil it extra, right? And you, normally you wouldn't run a gun with that much oil on it because it picks up residue and stuff like that. But this gun will keep it oiled really well. So that's just an interesting kind of piece of history, a piece of family history. And uh, it's just a beautiful old gun. Um, and I think that says a lot about the 1911 design. You know, this gun was made in 1918. And I could take it out right now, and I guarantee you I could run a thousand rounds through this with no malfunctions. Uh, other than the occasional stovepipe, which these have a tendency to do, especially when you shoot them indoors, because the brass will kick up and hit and bounce off the side thing and come right back down, and it'll just catch like right there. But, uh, but you know, with that, you just, you just swipe it off and, and keep shooting. Uh, but, yeah. So, um, as far as like full size 1911s, would I buy another one to carry every day? Like, no, because this is a really heavy gun to carry. Um, so, I, and 1911s are still pretty darn expensive. I mean, they're old, but they're a big, heavy chunk of metal and they're pretty expensive. But they are a really unique design. You know, one of the first main auto loading, auto repeating, uh, you know, firearms. Not the first, but one of the, the early ones that you know happened and uh, and just ran and ran and ran uh, you know it's a it's a browning design and uh, you know it, it served the military for 70 some years right that this was their sidearm um, now today you know they have things that double stack hold more rounds and you know the 45 round it's not the best round ballistically you know a lot of people like you know think that the 45 you know you're gonna you know even my dad used to tell me, like, well, you know, uh, on the 38s, you know, they just, they were shooting the Filipinos in, in the in the island war or something, I, I don't know. But uh, they were just finding there was no stopping power, so they, they invented this 45. And if you hit anybody anywhere on their body with this 45, it's guaranteed to knock them down. Uh, and you know those those were just the myths that were spread commonly back then before I guess we knew better, but uh, you know the 45 is a really slow moving round, um, and it, it 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 has some some hitting power, some knockdown power, but it's not. I would say a good nine millimeter is probably ballistically uh, better at delivering the impact needed to to take somebody down, but. Um, you know, you used to hear those stories all the time, and I heard those stories from my dad. And, uh, you know, truthfully, 45 is a pretty slow moving round. Um, so, I probably wouldn't carry a 45, and it's a big round, so you can hold less uh, ammunition, less rounds. But uh, it definitely is, you know, will get the job done. Um, I know there was a, a carjacking or an attempted carjacking around me well I guess the guy wasn't driving he was getting gas and uh, two guys came up and started beating on him trying to get his car keys he had to fight his way back to his gun which was in the center console he got his Glock out it was a 45 caliber Glock whichever number that is I, I don't know uh, but he shot uh, the one guy like seven or eight times and uh, the other guy just ran away and they took that guy to the hospital. He was released from the hospital the following day with no life-threatening injuries. So that tells you a little bit about, you know, 45 might not be the best choice. Um, but it did the job and eliminated the threat, you know, and, and got him out of trouble, I guess. So, um, but uh, just interesting, you know. The old magazine is pretty worn. It's got some rust on it. Got the blue wings worn off on the top of it, um, but she she locks in there. Uh, you know she's a she's a nice gun, but anyway, let me know what you think and 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 post down below a comment with like any old guns that you have. Do you have any old guns that belonged to, to your family members or that family members that fought in a war? maybe even older than this. Yeah, I'd just be curious to know. Anyway, I'll talk to y'all later. This is Tom, your frugal prepper.